We arrived to the moment in the Lord's Prayer uh, that is, give us the bread that we need now. After reflecting on who God is and after reflecting on the nature of God's kingdom, Jesus instructs us to ask uh, for the bread that we need, the bread that is for today. And asking for bread immediately draws my mind back to the history of Israel, particularly to Israel's wanderings in the wilderness. By the point of our text today in Exodus 15 to 16, Israel has been in Egypt and they've been oppressed because of Egypt's xenophobic fear. And I think xenophobia is the correct word here because Egypt is afraid because Israel keeps growing and growing within their borders and they view them as this hostile other within their own borders. And so they respond by oppressing the people with hard forced labor, with slavery. And this is their xenophobic response to the other within their own borders. But God has heard Israel's groaning and has seen their oppression. And so I want to draw your attention to something before we even get to our main passage for today. In Exodus 2, uh, it, it reads, And it happened in those many days that the king of Egypt died, and the Israelites moaned from their servitude, and they cried out, and their cry for help went up to God from their servitude. And God heard their groan, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God saw the Israelites, and God knew. In the beginning of Exodus, the, the people have actually forgotten who God is. Uh, they no longer know God's name. In Genesis, the matriarchs and the patriarchs knew who God was and, and prayed directly to God and created covenant with that God. But in Exodus, the people over the course of generations have actually forgotten who God is. And so it's, it's very clear when they groan, when they cry out, it's not even directed to God. It is just that they groan as if nobody was listening. But the text says that those prayers, that those groanings make their way up to God and that God hears them and God receives them as prayer. And I think the point here that I want you to see is that God is listening to you before you even pray. Before you even direct your prayer to God, God hears you. God can hear when you sigh. God can see the tension that you hold in your body. God can hear your groan before you even know how to put it into words. You don't have to beg for God's attention. You don't need any elaborate steps to get God to take time and hear you. Even if you don't address God at all, God already hears your prayers of exasperation and your groans of suffering and even the silence of your grief. God attends to us and part of God's nature is to attend to people and to their suffering. That's part of who God is. It is not something that we need to coerce God to do. God is already paying attention to us. Yes, there are rituals that we do when we pray. We may kneel or we may close our eyes or we may walk or, or anything else. We may put on music, but these are not ways of forcing God to hear us. They are actually for us. We may kneel because it helps us to get into a posture where we feel like we can listen or, or in a posture of reverence. But it is not required for God to hear us or to know our struggles. God is already a listening. This is why Jesus instructs us to pray. Give us the bread we need now. Because the God who cares for creation cares for us and attends to us. He's concerned for our needs. This message is a call to listen to your own body, to your own experience, and to your own histories, and to dare to speak honestly with God, without fear of being called ungrateful. God may have done amazing things for you, but that doesn't mean that you don't have real needs now. You may be overwhelmed with joy from, from the feeling of salvation that you, have, that you have found through Jesus. But that doesn't mean that you might not be struggling to feed your family. Or that you're not afraid to go outside because somebody might attack you or harass you. You may be struggling because of all the microaggressions you experience at work that make you feel out of place and that grind you down day after day until you can't take it anymore. Those are real needs. 
Those are needs that I think we can bring to God. Give us today what we need. God is not a gaslighting God, nor does God minimize our struggles. Rather, God actually invites our struggles into his very person. For some, this may be a challenge because we've been wrongly taught that to pray for ourselves is selfish, but it's not. There's really nothing else I could say about that. It's not selfish. God, who is our mother, who is our father in heaven, does not accuse us, does not gaslight us, but cares for us. And so we pray, give us today what we need today.